imagine there's a great kingdom that has um, a great dominion on the earth, a great empire, just like um, the Babylonian Empire is one of the greatest in pre-Christian uh, era. It's called the greatest pre-Christian empire um, that was reigning around the uh, 5th century BC, 539 BC, uh, around that time where the Babylonian em empire was so great and uh, so big that the walls went, uh, the walls of the whole city was like so long, 60 miles long, and the, the, bre the height of the walls were almost like 300 feet high, and the width of those walls were um, 80 feet wide, 80 feet wide, and also the walls of the city, not only just um, 300 feet, but also they dig deep, and uh, 30 feet deep was the walls of the Babylonian city. And this empire is one of the prominent one, not just the Assyrian empire, it was very ruthless, but Babylonian it was much greater that came later of the Assyrian empire, where it's also famous for its culture and tradition. They maintained um, a style and culture in their, in their ways. How they infiltrated their culture also is very unique. The Assyrians were different. They were very ruthless and they were uh, f very popular for the way they destroy and attack, conquer other kingdoms. That when they do that, they uh, very brutally they kill the, the, the leaders, the rulers of the conquered nation. And that is their pleasure but they don't have any order, but the Babylonians were very different, they were unique. They were, once they conquer the, um, the kingdoms, those conquered kingdoms would be, um, they do it in such a strategic way that um, they take some of the people from that nation and they take them back to their city, the capital, and they train them, they indoctrinate them so that they learn their culture and their, um, their traditions. So that's what happened with um, Daniel and Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego, all the young men were taken so that they might um, join their group, so that they might um, pledge the allegiance to the Babylonian culture and um, forsake the, their God. Yahweh God. That is the plan so that once they're trained in their um, system and their um, morals and other things that they will be sent back to back to their conquered nation so that they they will rule there as their representatives. That's how they used to handle things. It's a gr one of the greatest empire and um, the especially in, in terms of, um, in the times of Nebuchadnezzar was even much more popular because he did much more um, victories than any other um, uh, king that ruled. And then uh, when they found out in archaeology the, the bricks that were found, the Babylonian bricks, and when they looked at it, uh, the names that were written out of the ten bricks, if you take ten out of out of ten, nine of, nine of the bricks had Nebuchadnezzar's name in it. So imagine how popular this king was. This king is called as Nebo. The, the meaning of Nebuchadnezzar means Nebo, protect my eldest son, or Nebo, the, the Babylonian god, uh, protect my throne. Eldest son signifies that um, uh, the rule and uh, the kingship asking um, the Babylonian god Neb Nabu, Nebu to protect his throne. So imagine such a great king calling, making an announcement. Imagine in this current situation where like America or somebody like, but it's a pagan uh, nation, completely pagan nation. 
saying, I'm going to make an announcement. A pagan nation and a pagan king, and this king was so ruthless in his executions. If you turn to Jeremiah 52, let's quickly turn to Jeremiah 52, where Nebuchadnezzar came and besieged Jerusalem, and his third, when, when his final attack, that he took um, Zedekiah captive. Turn to Jeremiah 52. And um, verse 4 says, And it came to pass in the ninth year of his reign, in the tenth month, in the tenth day of the month, that Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, or here it has a different word, but came, he and all his army against Jerusalem and pitched against it and built forts against it round about. So the city was besieged into the eleventh year of the king Zedekiah. Imagine like he... Um, on the ninth year, between ninth year and uh, the tenth, and the eleventh year, he was he was pitched around Jerusalem, and he blocked all he 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 blocked everything so that nobody can come in or go out from the city. He besieged the city, and um, in the fourth month, that uh, all the people because of starvation, that they were not able to eat anything, they were all stuck inside, that um, that's how they break the city, when people have to run away, they run away as you read, so the city was broken up and all the men of war fled and went forth. So when um, these people conquered, when Nebuchadnezzar conquered Zedekiah, then they took the king and verse 9 says, and carried him up unto the king of Babylon to Ribla in the land of Hamath, where he gave judgment upon him. And the king of Babylon slew the sons of Zedekiah before his eyes. He slew also all the princes of Judah in Rabla. Then he put out the eyes of Zedekiah, and the king of Babylon bound him in chains and carried him to Babylon and put him in prison till the day of his death. So that one of our brothers already shared that um, the reason why, like uh, right in front of him, they, he's children were um, killed so that, and later on they, they pluck out his eyes so that throughout his lifetime, the only thing that he could remember, remind himself, was the, the death of their children, how their children were killed. And there's no other uh, vision that would come up. The last that he saw with his eyes was the death of his children. That's how brutal the Babylonian leaders were, especially Nebuchadnezzar. Imagine also in this current times, there is somebody or like who is so brutal, who is so ruthless, say let's take Hitler or somebody like that, that um, he would say that I'm going to announce to the world something. And then when he starts announcing, he, he gives a decree to the whole world. And this is how Nebuchadnezzar gave in the first three verses in Daniel chapter 4, verse 1, giving a testimony about God that is reigning on high, about this great God. He says, Nebuchadnezzar, this is the narration, chapter 4 is a narration of the, the final narration of, of Nebuchadnezzar, the, the king, the emperor, narrating to, to the whole world as his testimony, a pagan king narrating, giving a testimony of what God did and the wonders that God did in his life. Nebuchadnezzar, the king unto all people, nations, and languages that dwell in all the earth, peace be multiplied unto you. I thought it good to show the signs and wonders that the high God had wrought toward me. How great are his signs and how mighty are his wonders. His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and his dominion is from generation to generation. So here, this king who is the ruler of the whole earth, great king, is 
confessing that there is a God in heaven who does mighty things, who does signs and wonders. There is a high God that um, has a kingdom that is an everlasting kingdom and his dominion, his rule is from generation to generation. He rules and reigns. This pagan king is testifying to the whole world. And this chapter 4 is about a dream that um, Nebuchadnezzar receives. This dream is about, um, in verse 11, speaks about the dream that he says that the tree he dreamt and uh, verse 11 says the tree, he dreamt about a tree. The tree grew and was strong and the height thereof reached unto the heavens and the sight thereof to the ends of all the earth. The leaves thereof were fair and the fruit thereof much and it was meat for all. The beasts of the field had shadow under it and the falls of the heaven dwelt in the boughs thereof and all the flesh were fed of it. There were birds, there were falls and there were birds um, living, making their dwelling on, on top of the tree. And I saw in the heavens of my head upon my bed and behold a watcher and a holy one came down from heaven. And he cried aloud and said thus, hew down the tree and cut off his branches and shake off the leaves and scatter his fruit lest the beasts get away from under it and the fowls from his branches. Nevertheless leave the stump of these roots in the earth even with a band of iron and brass in the tender grass of the field, and let it be wet with the dew of heaven, and let his portion be with the beasts in the grass of the earth. Let his heart be changed from man's heart, and let a beast's heart be given unto him, and let seven times pass over him. He is talking about a dream that he received. He mentions that when he, were, he had a dream where he saw a big tree that reached all the way to the heavens and it was so huge and many living beings made their dwelling inside the tree but he also heard in his dream he heard a person coming down and the holy one coming down and cutting off the whole tree all the way to the bottom of it leaving only just the stump of it just the, with some something remnant left there and uh, Again, pointing back, saying that, um, pointing, saying that the person, his heart will be changed from a man's heart to a beast's heart, and uh, he'll be like that for seven times, maybe probably for seven years. And this person from heaven declares, saying that this matter is by the degree of the watchers and the demand by the word of the holy ones, to the intent. This is the reason why. He receives the dream. The reason is that the living may know that the Most High rules in the kingdom of men, that God reigns even among men, even the kingdoms of this world are governed and in control by God. That the Most High rules in, ha in the kingdom of man and giveth it to whomsoever he will and set up over it the basest of men. So this is the interpretation, the reason why he received the dream is to make all the people know that there is a God in heaven who, who rules, who reigns even upon the inhabitants of the earth. Not only he reigns and rules and uh, he does according to his will, but also he gives to whomever he pleases according to his own counsel and will. He gives and he appoints leaders by his own will and counsel as he determines by his own will. In the same lines we see in Daniel chapter 2, verse 21 also, Daniel's praising God and says, 
that Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever, for wisdom and might are his. And he changeth the times and seasons, he removes kings, sets up kings, he giveth wisdom unto the wise, knowledge to them that know understanding. He revealeth the deep and the secret things, he knoweth what is in darkness, and the light dwelleth with him. He knoweth what is in the darkness, he knoweth what is in the darkness, something that... Uh, we don't understand, even scientists don't know what exactly this darkness is, where energy is coming out in the universe, and they call it as dark matter and other things, to sustain the universe, um, constants and other things. So here God rules, though he is high on, in heaven, he rules even in the kingdom of earth and he gives. He has the power to change according to his own will. Nebuchadnezzar, uh, when he got this dream, first thing he does is he asks um, his people, he goes to his people. Once he realizes that his magicians and his um, people were not able to interpret the dream, then that's when he approaches Daniel. So God, one thing we have to remember is God is in control of everything, everything that happens, animate things and inanimate things, living creatures and non-living creatures, everything God is in control of everything that's happening and he is actively involved in the lives of the whole earth. He rules. The theme of this chapter 4 is that God rules. Nebuchadnezzar is confessing in 34, saying, At the end of the days, I, Nebuchadnezzar, lifted up mine eyes unto heaven, and mine understanding returned unto me, in me, and I blessed the Most High, and praised and honored him, that liveth forever, whose dominion is an everlasting dominion, and his kingdom is from generation to generations. And all the inhabitants of the earth are counted as nothing, and he doeth according to his own will. In the army of heaven, not only in heaven, but also among the inhabitants of the earth and nothing can stop his hand nobody can stop his determined will and counsel that's what our god is and here a pagan emperor is giving the testimony to the whole world god appoints People, especially the basest and the lowest, all sometimes you see that's why you see leaders in this uh, in the current world. They don't seem to be so wise, and sometimes they just come to power. Maybe not only just in wisdom, but not even in strength. They don't seem to be so strong leaders in wisdom or in making decisions. They make they just utter such. Sometimes it feels that it's such a foolish statement. Even like any sane person would, would not even say those kind of things. I imagine like uh, in 13th century in India, there's a um, king in Delhi. He was reigning um, the Mughal emperor, I guess. He's called, you all know Muhammad bin Tughlaq, because you all know the word Tughlaq, right? Don't behave like a Tughlaq. The word, because he inherited from his father, the empire, and he was reigning, and uh, he had good education. I was looking at his, uh, his, uh, his background. He had good education, and he had uh, very interesting ambitions. But the way he was called Tughlaq, in a way that he, Tughlaq means a foolish person. Don't behave like a Tughlaq means don't be mad or something like that. It's a common phrase that in uh, India we use that word. Tughlaq means fool. Don't be a fool. It came from him because he did such foolish things. One of the things that he did was, um, in order to, there was a shortage of coins, and uh, 
in, there was some shortage of uh, coins. So what he did was there was bronze and uh, copper coins. And uh, he said that the bronze coin and the copper coins are the same value as the silver and gold coins. So, so that in his, treasury, in his treasury, he had like gold and silver coins. And because there was shortage of bronze and silver coins, um, we said, okay, let's make all gold and the bronze the same value. So the people, like the farmers, they had so much of copper, like all copper vessels, they converted all the copper vessels, they forged everything into, uh, into coins, and they exchanged it with the, the treasury. So after a couple of years, all his treasury became empty. There's nothing in the tre Everybody took all the gold out. Since that point, he didn't realize that uh, he made such a foolish thing, that he lost all his gold and everything. And then he was upset, and he increased the taxes to the farmers that cannot afford taxes. And all the farmers, they stopped farming because it's impossible for them to pay the taxes and they stopped farming. And because they stopped farming, there was a big famine, there was no food. And uh, so he was called a Tughlaq for his crazy um, decisions that he made, that he suddenly decided to change his capital from Delhi to Dolatabad, that is in Maharashtra from Delhi. And then at that time in the 13th century, it's not easy f for people to move. So he changed, he moved his home from that place to this place, but he also made a commandment. He said that he mandated that all the people in Delhi should also move. That was such a rude and harsh and foolish uh, decision that he made that many people died, thousands of people died. That's why he, called his, he was called as a Tughlaq for all these. He was, but still, we have to remember that God sets up even those that doesn't seem to be wise and strong in this world as leaders according to his own will, according to his own counsel. He sets up. God is overall, and who can uh, say anything against his counsel? And, or who can say, what doest thou? So Daniel meets Nebuchadnezzar and uh, tells the, the meaning of the vision that this tree is nothing but you. You, O king, is the tree that will be cut off. And um, when, he rece when Nebuchadnezzar receives the dream, he was terrified. But when Daniel hears his dream, Daniel also, for one hour he was troubled in his thoughts. Verse 19, the king spake and said, Belteshar, let not the dream or the interpretation thereof trouble thee. Belteshar answered and said, My lord, the dream be to them that hate thee, and the interpretation therefore to thine enemies. But the tree that thou sawest, which grew and strong, whose height reached unto the heaven, and the sight thereof to all the earth, whose leaves were fair, and the fruit thereof much, and in it was meat for all, under which the beasts of the field dwelt, upon whose branches the falls of the heavens had their inhabitation, it is thou. Daniel is saying that this tree, what you have dreamt, is nothing but you, O king, that art grown and become strong, for thy greatness is grown, and reacheth unto heaven, and thy dominion to the end of the earth. Whereas the king saw a watcher and a holy one coming down from heaven, and saying, Hew the tree down and destroy it, yet leave the stump of the roots. Therefore, in the earth, even with a band of iron and brass in the tender grass of the field, and let it be wet with the dew of the heaven, and let his portion be with the beasts of the field, till seven times pass over him. So, and Daniel gives the interpretation, saying that this is the interpretation, O king, this is the decree of the Most High, which is come upon my Lord the King, that they shall drive thee from men, and that dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field, and they shall make thee to eat grass as oxen, and they shall wet thee with the dew of heaven, and seven times shall pass over thee, till thou know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men, and giveth it to whomsoever he will. So he, he says, Daniel says that you are, this pers you are this tree that will be driven away from your place. And uh, you'll be driven away from men and you will dwell with animals, beasts of the field, and you'll, even your heart will be like that of an animal. 
you will behave like that and you will eat like an oxen grass like an oxen and um, you will be going through you won't be in a place uh, you will be just like an animal so that you will get wet from the dew of the um, the clouds and uh, t until seven years or seven times could be seven years or maybe like six months uh, we don't know exactly but it could most probably mean seven years that he will be in that state till he come to know till he comes to know that the most high rules in the kingdom of man and giveth it to whomsoever he pleases till he comes to realize that God reigns even in the kingdom of the earth and then he can give to whomsoever he wishes and he can change things he can replace kings and leaders till he realizes that he will be in that state so Daniel tells King saying that let this not go through it's verse 26 onwards and whereas they commanded to leave the stump of the tree roots the kingdom shall be sure unto thee after thou shalt have known that the heavens do rule therefore O king let my counsel be acceptable unto thee and break off thy sins by righteousness and thine iniquities by showing mercy to the poor here Daniel is pleading saying that let it not happen to you but show mercy to the poor and repent from your iniquities and turn back to God and break off thy sins by showing mercy and kindness and doing things that are just and right in the eyes of the Most High that this may not come to you this trouble may not come to you the king understood the dream he received it but uh, after a couple of months he must have totally like back in his own way I guess says that in Cape to, and uh, 28 says all this came upon the king Nebuchadnezzar after 12 months everything that was mentioned in the dream comes to pass in the life of Nebuchadnezzar when he was walking in his own palace verse 30 says the king spake and said lo this is this not my great Babylon that I have built for the house of the kingdom by the might of my power he he is attributing all the glory to himself to his power and for the honor of my majesty remember that this king scholars believe that this king is the one who who made the the, this, the Babylon the wonders of the what is it the hanging gardens of Babylon was built by this king for his queen that is a, one of the ancient wonders of the world he when he was looking at all these majestic palaces that uh, he built for him for his glory and for his majesty that he is praising himself feeling so great then was 31 then the word was still in his mouth there fell a voice from heaven saying, O King Nebuchadnezzar, to thee it is spoken, the kingdom is departed from thee, and they shall drive thee from men, and they shall, and thy dwelling shall be with the beasts of the field, they shall make thee to eat grass as oxen, seven times shall pass over thee, until thou knowest the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men. Again, the same repeated theme, the Most High, until you know that there is a God in heaven. There is this God who rules among men and he is the ruler not only of the things of heaven but also the things that happen in the earth he rules in the kingdom of men and giveth it to whomsoever he will the same hour was the thing fulfilled unto Nebuchadnezzar and he was driven from men and he did eat grass as oxen and his body was wet with the dew of heaven till his hairs were grown like eagles hair and his nails like the bird's claws. We might think that how is this great emperor could have gone through such a situation, is it truly possible? But it's true, if you go back and see in the history, there are a couple of other people also, rulers, who had gone through this similar disease. It's called as, um, some people call it as boanthropy when 
this, this is a mental condition or a disease where human beings behave like animals. Sometimes they behave like wolves, sometimes like um, other animals, like ox, something. And here he must be behaving like um, an ox eating grass, eat grass as oxen. That um, he was driven out of his palace to a place where he was living with um, beasts. Even during the f third century or the fourth century, there is an Armenian emperor who also had the similar condition. Even people believe that George the three emperor of the United Kingdom also he also had this mental disease that he was behaving like. Um, an animal and completely insane. So it's true that God can bring people that are exalted to according to his own um, will in his own time that he can bring them down to bring their pride down as he was, Nebuchadnezzar was confessing in verse 37, saying, those that walk in pride, he is able, he is able to abase. And finally, after those seven years, after he became, he looks like an animal with all his um, nails, like the bird claws, and um, he went through all these natural conditions that he was in, that he comes to his senses, and then he lifts up his eyes unto heaven. When you look, when a, somebody looks up to heaven, it's like looking unto God for um, grace upon him. The God, when he understood that the Most High is the one who is in control of everything, that he's the one who reigns on high, that God again restores back his glory to him when he acknowledges that he's the one who reigns and he's the one who lives forever and ever, and his dominion is an everlasting dominion. Though he was the ruler of the whole earth, still God made him realize that there is a God who reigns from on high. So God gives, God rules, God changes and brings things according to his own will. If you compare it with um, the present world also, there is a ruler in this world that is controlling everything. That is called as the prince of the power of the air. In Ephesians chapter 2, verse um, 1 onward speaks about him. He's called as the devil. And he's in control of those that are still in disobedience. Paul says that in very in the time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now is work is working in the children of disobedience. That is the devil. He controls all the people of this world, everything that is given to him, he is controlling the whole world leaders that are not of God's children. And um, it's like having he having the whole dominion of the whole earth. But one thing we have to realize that there is a God who is above all and who is overall in, in charge of everything. There is a God who is greater than the devil. We should, that's the reason we should not fear the devil or the powers of darkness. God is greater than the devil. If you are truly a child of God, if you are truly a born again believer, the Spirit of God dwells in you. And he that dwells in you the Bible tells us is greater than he that is in the world. There is somebody that is in the world that has some limited power that God allowed him to reign in the children of darkness. Says that the spirit that 
is um, reigning in the children of darkness. But we as God's children should not fear the ruler of this world. But we should trust the living God. We should trust that he is the one who is reigning above all. And he is a God in heaven who has all dominion and power and his kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. If we see Satan, his power has been destroyed through Jesus Christ. Let's see um, in Ephe Hebrews chapter 2 was Fourteen and fifteen speaks about how God destroyed his works and his power. For as much then as the children are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the same, that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death, that is the devil, and deliver him who through the fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. For verily he took not on him the nature of angels, but he took on him the seed of Abraham. So here we see that God became like us, being flesh and blood, and he, through his death, he was able to put to death the works of the devil. Now he has limited power. Actually he has no power upon God's children because God has destroyed his works in our lives that um, he has no power in our lives John Bunyan also was mentioning as in his pilgrim's progress that as a Christian the pilgrim was walking in, in this in this way in his way that he saw two lions actually change but in front of him and he was afraid to walk by in the middle of the two lions. But as he was walking closer, he realized that those lions had no um, teeth. They were toothless, so they cannot do any harm. They were powerless. They were chained. Because God destroyed the work of the devils. If we truly come to him, we have this power in us through the Spirit of God. Imagine there is a room, there are three rooms, and then um, in one of the room there is a deadly uh, cobra, and in another room there is a wild bear is there. There is another room where there is a lion that hasn't been eaten for a year. So which room out of the three would you, if you have to, if you have to decide that you have to choose any of the, you have to go into one of the rooms, there's a snake, there is a lion, and there is a bear, which room would you rather like go into? Lion? Why? Huh? It's what? It's because no teeth? <laughs> I didn't say that there's no teeth to the lion. Oh, he's weak. Yeah, everybody can go to, to, the, to the land because he hasn't eaten for a year, so he's already dead there, right? <laughs> so just, just, just to wake you up. I was asking Charlie this question, and he said that uh, I'll go to the... She said she'll go to, this, to the room where there's a snake. Is Why? Because the lion is already dead. <laughs> That's okay if the lion is dead, right? <laughs> That's why we want to go there. So, <laughs> we don't want to go to a snake, again, bitten or anything. But anyway, so, so we have a God who is in us, that is greater than, who, than he that is in the world. Let's read that, John, 1 John chapter 4, verse 4. <clears throat> It says that ye are of God little children and have overcome them because greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. 
we have the holy spirit we have god with us so we can do everything as long as uh, we are in him as long as we trust him we can do great things for god we can do mighty things just the same way how daniel shadrach meshach and abednego did such great things that they maintained their testimony in spite of all the fears that we that you and i might have in this world when we go into this into our workplace and when we um, face the world there are so many challenging situations that we see as if that um, it's very difficult for us to imagine and uh, when we see all, all those people that are on top of us ruling us and uh, taking um, control of certain things of our lives when we see our boss and our boss boss and director everybody uh, pagan people leading the organizations and um, the whole world and when we see pagan leaders unbelievers ruling the whole world we might have this fear in us as if that god is not in control but here this chapter and this testimony from nebuchadnezzar is a wonderful testimony to remind ourselves that god reigns there is a god in heaven that reigns and then he can change things according to his own counsel and according to his own will if you look at um, daniel the the meaning of daniel is called um, god is my judge but as he entered babylon along with his uh, friends mishael asaria and um, hananiah hananiah mishael and asaria as soon as they entered their names were changed because those people believed that during that time they all believed that their gods were using them as instruments if they win a nation it means that their gods have won and their gods are greater than the gods of that nation so as soon as they come they they have changed their names they changed daniel's name to belteshazzar daniel means god is my judge but they changed it to belteshazzar which means bel protect the king or the crown and they changed mishael's name which is mishael which means uh, actually hananiah which means god is gracious and they changed it to shadrach which means command of aku or um the servant of i'm um, the command of the god of moon that's the babylonian god and from mishael they changed it to meshach mishael means who is like this great god the mighty god and they changed it to who is they changed it to this the name of their god called aku we it's not like a leaf <laughs> <laughs> means force the moon god they changed their names in azariah which means god helps they change it to abednego which means you are the servant of nebo so they want to change them their whole being so that they are indoctrinated to the babylonian um, doctrines and culture so that they become just like them but have they changed when daniel was um, his name was changed to belteshazzar but daniel still maintained his integrity actually even his name the king was calling him daniel more than he's calling belteshazzar if you look at daniel chapter 5 even the queen calls daniel as daniel rather than calling him belteshazzar he maintained his testimony even in his pagan place daniel maintained his testimony he did not fear the king more than he feared god more than the king because god can do things god can do great and mighty things all we have to do is trust him and he will take care of our lives every area of our lives he is in control even meshel and uh, azariah and hananiah maintained their integrity and maintained 
a good testimony. They did not fear what's happening around them. They still continue to focus upon Christ and God, who is sovereign, who is the ruler of the whole world, and who is able. And they followed God, and God exalted them, even in that difficult situation in the pagan country, that they were still preserved. They were preserved, even their lives were preserved. They had good positions, great positions, and God preserved them. We can take this application, even in our current situation, that even though the world is filled with paganism, even in our offices are filled with uh, worldliness, we can still hold on to God, we can still trust in our God. Just take the case of this Halloween. There's so much pressure to partake in the Halloween festival, this pagan religion, and all the celebration that comes with it. But if you hold on to your testimony and give honor to God, believing that there's a God who is above all, and he reigns from on high, not only in heaven, but he reigns even among the inhabitants of the earth, that he is able to abase those that are proud, and he giveth to whom or so ever he pleases. That's when also we can try to honor our leaders, because it is God that gives them the power. It's Romans chapter 13, verse one says, let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God. The powers that are ordained are of God. So God gives powers, and God sets up powers. One thing I want to remind you before I close is that we should continue to trust in the Lord. Because God is still reigning, and He is the ruler of the whole earth. Let's turn to Psalm 146, verse 3 onwards. Put not your trust in princes, nor in the Son of Man, in whom there is no help. His breath goeth forth, he returneth to his earth, in that very day his thoughts perish. Happy is he that has a God of Jacob for his help, whose hope is in the Lord his God. Happy is he who had the God of Jacob for his help. If you have the God of Jacob as your help, and if you hope in this God who is the ruler of the heaven and the earth, then you will be happy. He will take care of all your needs. You shall not want anything. He leads you beside the still waters. He restores you, he leads you in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake, and you shall not want. I shall not want, because he is our shepherd. Happy is he that has the God of Jacob for his help, whose hope is in the Lord his God, which made heaven and earth, the sea, and all therein, which keepeth truth forever, which executeth judgment for the oppressed, which giveth food to the hungry, the Lord loseth the prisoner, the Lord openeth the eyes of the blind, the Lord raiseth them that bow down, the Lord loveth the righteous. Isn't it beautiful that the Lord loves the righteous? The Lord loves those who are His. Verse 9 says, The Lord preserves the strangers, He relieveth the fatherless and the widow, but the way of the wicked He turneth upside down. The Lord shall reign forever and ever, forever, even thy God. O Zion, unto all generations, praise ye the Lord. The Lord reigns forever and ever. He is in control. He is in charge. No matter what situations that we might have in uh, our day-to-day -day lives, that we should remember that He is able to change things upside down. He is all-powerful. And He is almighty and all-able. So that we can remember the meaning of Daniel, that God judges. God is my judge. We can remember the meaning of Hananiah, that God is gracious, God is loving. We can remember the meaning of Michelle, that who is like our God? There is none like our God. He is such a great God. Nothing is impossible to Him. 
We can remember Azariah, the meaning of Azariah, which means God helps. That God is not a God who is just watching from far off, but God helps. And he desires to be actively involved in your life and my life. So we have to continue to trust in him, believing that there is a God in heaven that reigns, believing that God reigns, that the heavens reign. Let me read um, verse um, 17 again, Daniel 4, 17 and close. This matter is by the decree of the watchers and the demand by the word of the holy ones to the intent that the living may know that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men and giveth it to whomsoever he will and setteth up over it the basest of men. God reigns, the heavens rule. Let's um, close our eyes and let's pray. Dear loving Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you, we praise you, Lord, for giving us this, these words that uh, you can change rulers and authorities and everything is in your hand, Lord. You reign in the inhabitants of the earth and you change and you control everything. Everything is done according to your will and nobody can stop your hand Lord and who can give you counsel O Lord you are such a great God we thank you Lord but uh, you are a gracious God you're a God who helps a God who loves your children as your word says O Lord and a God who sees a God who judges everything O Lord and we know that all things work to our good to them that love God, to them who are called according to your purpose. Lord, we thank you, we praise you, Lord, for uh, being such a great God, the God of Daniel, the God of the Bible, the Most High God, the God of Heaven. Lord, bless these words so that uh, as we go from here, Lord, may we be strengthened to follow you and to be, keep our testimonies. As this pagan emperor, Lord, um, witnessed about your greatness, Lord, that you are a God whose dominion is, is uh, from generation to generation and your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. Lord, we also remember this testimony and may it apply to our lives that we may also trust in you and to follow you and to live for you, that you are in control of the whole world, everything happens according to your will and according to your counsel, O oh Lord. We thank you, we praise you. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen.